This call is being recorded. Amen. Can you guys hear me okay? Amen. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> Technology is still working. Praise the Lord. Well, today we have, I, I just give all the glory to the Lord Yeshua for today. Today is just a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. This is just today is going to be a, this is going to be a unique time because we're going to be going over advanced battle strategies that the enemy actively uses against all of us now we've already done worship we have prayed up this service so we have prayed this thing up we we are we are prayed up we are girded up and now you're going to get the knowledge imparted to you from what takes place there's a lot of things that happen here throughout the week that no one is privy to. There's a lot of spiritual attack that comes against us. When we say uh, spiritual high places, principalities and powers in high places, that is no joke. It is a real legitimate fact that there are very, very powerful principalities at work. And they use very, very unique, very crafty, very cunning attacks against us here. And whenever they do, what we're doing here is cataloging everything, every detail, how they're using uh, witchcraft, how they're using what we call the glory, this magnificent gift, but as a means to attack us in, in Christianity, detailing every detail, and every single time that they attack, we're going to take this knowledge, and we're going to go back, and we're going to give it right on back to you in Christianity with the details. So you get the enemy's playbook so that you know exactly how to defend yourself. Now, the most important thing before we ever get started, and I received this from a pastor in Israel, Teddy Chadwick. He said the first thing that he teaches when he starts teaching on the glory is he teaches do not use it to manipulate others. And this is very, very important that we do not use our gift to manipulate others. Well, I felt that in the spirit just now, a uh, sense that there was even the remote possibility that that was happening. It's very, very important that that does not happen. You are, if you use any gift through the glory to manipulate a human being, then you are entertaining satanic witchcraft, and that leads straight to hell and opens the door for Satan to control your life. Remember that. If you use it to manipulate others, to make them happy so it conveniences you, so you can have more peace and quiet in a certain area, that is satanic witchcraft, in which case that gets cast to the fiery lake of hell. So remember this. Very, very, very important. Very, very, it is the most important, do not manipulate others. Remember that if you want to understand the rules of this game and how it works, remember that it works like this. Everything must be based on love. Nothing counts except for your faith expressing itself through love. If it's outside of that definition, and the biblical definition of love is found in 1 Corinthians 13 and Galatians 5, 22 and 23, and the same author that wrote about love, I got to say this like a broken record, is the same one who said that homosexuality was an abomination so that there's not anybody to listen to these recordings later on in life and go, well, I can use love, and love is perverse, and, and you know, it can be as bisexual, transgendered, and crazy as it wants to be, so I can just pervert that love to meet whatever need that I want. No, that literally fits the definition of selfishness and manipulation. Is it selfish and self-seeking? <laughs> that is manipulation. Am I using my gift in that purpose? That opens the door. I'm letting you know how this works so that you are not ignorant of the enemy's devices. Amen. Remember the even in the book of Revelation, there are scriptures where it talks about how folks would not, um, you know, uh, 
what does it say about Satan? It says in in the book Revelation, it talks about how this one church didn't fall for Satan's so-called deep secrets. Okay, well, Satan he uses witchcraft. He uses this in a very profound way to try to attack the human body. We've seen this throughout history. In fact, one of the very oldest books in the entire Bible, the book of Job, describes how Satan goes roaming to and from the earth, and literally when he comes before the throne and he asks permission and he seeks permission, and God grants him permission, what's the first thing this brother starts trying to do against this guy? He starts trying to go inside of him and literally affect his body, affect his health. So the ability for Satan to go inside your body, as we've explained in the last several weeks during these church services, is very, very real. What's that scripture? When a spirit comes out of a man, right? Okay, so I'm saying this so that you do not open the door for Satan to operate in your life. So in order for me to teach you what I'm going to teach you and for order for you to be successful with what I teach you, in order for you to be successful with what I teach you today, you have to get this. You have to close every door for Satan to enter into your temple. Your house cannot have the back door cracked open a little bit if it is, and that door is unlocked, and it's cracked even an inch. And guess what? That enemy, I heard Bless say this, and it stuck with me. That enemy is going to literally walk through your door. He's going to walk through your kitchen, going to walk right into your living room, walk right into your bedroom, because you had that back door open an inch. The back door needs to be closed. It needs to be locked. Yes, the one you weren't thinking about. And so be holy. Be holy in your mind. Be holy in your heart. Be holy in your soul, in your loins. Be holy in every part of your anatomy. Be holy. If you open up the door to pornography, and you look at things you ought not to do, even if you think it's for a second, it opens up a door to your heart. And the door that's open then gives access to that principality and power, which then uses witchcraft. What you and I call the glory, it uses for witchcraft purposes to then enter your cerebral cortex and enter your heart because you opened the door to that sin. But that's not the only kind. You're going to find – go ahead and put that down. You're going to go ahead and find that the enemy is extraordinarily crafty, extraordinarily crafty. So what I'm going to do – is as I'm being attacked by the enemy's forces, as the Lord literally uses me as a supernatural, I don't even know what to call it, um, in, in a way where I am getting engaged by Satan himself and the highest principalities and powers that are on this earth that use the 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 spells of witchcraft and use divination, okay, the very highest ones going from Israel and all over the world, as they attack me, this is what occurs. So I can give you personal testimony of how it works so that you then can be successful in your walks. So I'm going to give you a personal testimony of something that took place this week with me and how you can defend yourselves against it. So this week we've, oh my gosh, there was several encounters, but the one that stuck out the most was the first one was one night I began to feel, I, I, I felt at first, I felt a sharp pain in my stomach area and I felt it and I was like, whoa, buddy, I, it felt like a really, really sharp pain. And then the only way to describe this now, remember, I'm not a medical professional. I'm just a, you know, just a brother and fellow servant in the Lord here. I can only testify. Lord says I don't understand anything. I only can testify about what I've observed. I could tell you what it felt like, and I could tell you what was taking place in my body. 
it felt at first, I felt a sharp pain. It felt like I had really, really bad, almost like irritable bowel syndrome, but it was, it was different. It was like, it was a sharp pain. And then it felt like it, as weird as this sounds, it feels like, like there was electricity just firing everywhere in my stomach, like my gut bacteria, like the electricity that the bacteria produces when they break down food molecules and they feed that energy to the rest of your body. Um, it felt like that, that electricity was just all over the place. Like it was just on fire. Like it was sending all sorts of adverse signals to every single part of my body. And it felt like, to just be real, it felt like it was putting um, massive pressure on my heart. So it literally made me feel like I was at one point having a, like a heart attack. Uh, where there was, it was like the enemy was not only trying to disrupt the electrical signals that were inside of my gut's bacteria, but then attempt to use that as a tool to then put pressure on my heart and on my heart cells and then go into my brain and then use that misfiring that's taking place from the gut's internal bacteria cause disruptions between the signal carriers between one synapse and the other so that one synapse is firing a certain way than another is and by doing that cause inflammation and irritation even in my brain and you have to understand this when your soul your soul your soul your spirit it's inside of you your cells cannot live without your spirit it cannot live without the spirit of the lord in fact it literally says in the word it says if i if i took back my breath you would die and literally turn to dust and so that's very true so the so the cells the soul the enemy understands this your soul is intertwined with every eukaryotic cell in your body so every cell everything that's taking place inside of your body your soul, your spirit is literally intertwined with every single one of those cells in your body, from your bones, to your heart, to your liver, to your thyroid glands, your testosterone, estrogen, you know, centers. It is attached to everything. And the enemy understands this in a, like a medical terminology. He, he understands this at a cellular level. The enemy is not ignorant, which is why it says, you know, Satan's so-called deep secrets that he likes to teach folks. Because in witchcraft, the enemy exploits the fact that your spirit is attached to your cells. So if there is anything that's inside your heart that can be a backdoor access for it to gain entry, all it's looking for is that backdoor access in your heart to gain entry. Once it has gained entry, then what it does is it then amplifies that electric signal. It gives it a right, if you will, to amplify the electric signal to then start causing and wreaking havoc. And so long as your spirit is attached to your body, your body then has feedback it is biofeedback where then you'll begin feeling the effects of oh my gosh my stomach's starting to hurt or people will complain of being dizzy or they'll start complaining of xyz okay of behavioral changes and that is literally a lie from satan but this is how he does it he knows that your spirit is attached to your body so in this case we're like okay i've got nearly every known shield of faith there is can be known attached to my body so how in the world and this is what the lord showed me and there's a powerful scripture that that i have that actually backs us up when it talks about it says godly it says in second corinthians seven ten. it says godly sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation and leaves no regret but worldly sorrow brings death. Okay, I'm going to read this again because it's very important that you understand the science that's behind the scripture. There is science. 
This is where science and the word are meeting up with one another, okay? And how it works with the glory and how the enemy is using this, okay? Godly sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation and leaves no regret. But worldly sorrow brings death. So when I was undergoing what I was undergoing, I had my wife praying for me, and she was laying on hands. And as she was laying on hands and using the glory with me, she said something very, very peculiar. She said, she said, I discern, and I speak protection over these words in Yeshua's name. She said, I discern that there is a deep amount of regret inside of you. And immediately, I started just weeping because it was true. So many things that I regret. So many things that I regretted. There were so many things that I see now in the past where the enemy was pulling strings, where the enemy was manipulating, where the enemy has just used divination in the most destructive purposes. And there are times when when – I didn't understand how that attack was occurring, and I regret things that I said or actions that I took, and there was deep regret, and I, a lifetime of deep, deep regret. Now, I thought that I had actually given that to the cross. But the truth is, is that, you know, we're, the way we're taught, we're literally just taught, you know, give it to the cross like it's a phrase that you use, but you know how like it's a phrase you use. And it sounds good. And you're like, Lord, I give it to the cross, but you still feel it inside of you. Like you can say the words, but you actually still feel it. Well, in the same exact way, I had said the words, I spoke the words. I'd never really given it to the Lord until that moment. Now, just like how we, you and I, use the glory with one another and we've got we've got brothers on this phone call from around the country praise god we got three men on this phone call this is literally an answer to prayer holy ghost this is this is it praise the lord for you brothers you are getting this because as you get this you're going to share this with your family with your children these are the keys to the kingdom so let me explain to you how it works just like you have received an impartation from us. Like, you know that in the glory, how you receive an impartation from one another. Amen. In the same exact way, how we receive an impartation through the glory and we share that love with one another, Amen. what we're doing, what I did, was I imparted through the glory, through the glory, I imparted all of the regret. And what it what it felt like is it felt like all these images in time, all these images that went through time, and 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 I saw all the things that I regretted, all the things that would lead to a spirit of condemnation to try to come against me, and through the glory I saw it and I imparted it through the glory to Yeshua. So it's a physical impartation. It is a physical impartation. It is not just a phrase that you speak as if it is like kind speech. It is a physical act of imparting where you impart that regret, that you impart those very heavy feelings, those feelings that you have, that emotional feelings, the fear that you're holding on to, the regret you're holding on to, the condemnation that you're holding on to, the, the, the past sins that you're holding on to, the things, that, anything that Satan can and will use against you, you, you literally use the gift of the glory from John 17, 22 and 23, and you impart it to the Lord Yeshua. Amen. And when he re, when you release it from your heart to Yeshua, then what you've done is you have taken that 
out of your heart, you've taken that power out and away from your eukaryotic cells. So now your soul that's attached to all of your cells, it no longer has that extraordinarily faint energy signature that carries that regret because the enemy has been exploiting that very faint energy signature that's holding all your life and your cells together. He, he identifies that faint disruption in your cellular system. He identifies that faint little signal and then he piggybacks on that faint signal. And where you're having every shield known to mankind, you've got scriptures written on the walls, and all of a sudden you're feeling like, wait a minute, all of a sudden I feel like I'm having a heart attack. That's contrary to my word. It had nothing to do with you. It was the enemy, and the enemy was exploiting that regret or that fear or whatever that negative emotion was that you were holding on to that, w that is what the Bible refers to as worldly sorrow. That worldly sorrow brings death. The enemy can exploit that worldly sorrow to literally attempt to kill you. And you have to understand, it's all a delusion. See, the, the enemy is the father of lies. He's the father of lies. So even when, for instance, when the camp of the enemy put a militarized, weaponized nerve agent in my vehicle, on my, in, my, in, 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 in the vehicle's air filter, uh, uh, seat covers, my gym bag, my walking stick. They put it on my doggone toothpaste bottle for crying out loud. They put it on my bag of chips. They even put it on a water bottle, okay? And when I ingested a cookie that had it, when I literally touched it, when they put it in my air filter with the expectation that simply by breathing in the nerve agent, it would be enough to kill me. They literally had a car. They had a car. I won't give the details. I'll only give these type of details to the folks that come here. Literally on standby with a cage in the back waiting for me to pass out so that they can take my dead body out somewhere where they can dispose of it. It was ruthless. When, when I ingested that nerve agent, immediately began feeling its effects, I heard the Holy Spirit as clear as day. He said, get that delusion out of you. I don't care if it's a nerve agent. I don't care if it's the COVID-19 virus. Anything that is contrary to your word of faith that you have been given, that gives you life here on earth, and you have not accomplished that task, Meaning you have not walked out. That word that you have been given has not been fulfilled yet, and you're still alive, then anything that would try to take your life is a delusion from the enemy. Amen. But don't be ignorant. Don't be ignorant. It specifically says godly sorrow brings repentance. You repent to the king. I did. I was like, I, I regret. He knows my heart. I can't live with the mistakes I've made. I, I just can't. I have to give it to him. I, it is physically impossible for me to live with that kind of regret. If I dwell on it, the enemy would otherwise convince me that it just – I am unsuited for life. And so I give it to him. Amen. Amen. And by doing so, it leaves no regret. Amen. 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 There is no condemnation. You got something to say? I feel it. Oh, man, this is just so powerful. I just feel, I feel the power behind this. And I have seen angels here. And this is just overtaking the enemy. And I'm just ecstatic about it. Amen. 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 Because worldly sorrow, if you hold on to that, you hold on to your regret, that's worldly sorrow. 
then you have not adopted his salvation. He came to free us from that. So if you hold on to it, worldly sorrow brings death. So do not be ignorant because your enemy is ro he's roaming around like a roaring lion looking to devour people. So this is one of the ways that he attempts to devour us. So if you hold on to that condemnation, you hold on to something that's unholy, the enemy will try to use that. And then all of a sudden, a person who is not given that over, they start feeling things. They're like, Pastor Josh, why am I feeling like all of a sudden I feel like I'm dizzy or I feel like my stomach just feels like there's a knife going through or I feel like a knife's going through my chest? That's because the back door that the enemy is using is precisely what I'm describing to you. Right. He's using regret. He's using fear. He's using these things that are contrary to the word that you've been given. Right. Well, and this begins to tell a whole different story now. This begins to begin telling the truth that we're not to live a life of regret. We're not to live. We're to live a life of holiness. We are to live a life with the confidence, the confidence, the sheer confidence. All these people are freaking out, freaking out about the coronavirus, COVID-19, freaking out. I have prophesied to you that there will be even worse viruses that are coming in the future. There's going to be worse viruses and there's going to be worse diseases. But you got to understand, remember, it says in Thessalonians, it says, for this reason, the Lord sends them a powerful delusion so that those who did not believe in the truth would perish. The Lord is enabling, the Lord is allowing a very powerful delusion to go forth throughout the earth. You tell me. You're the one with the word of faith that you've been given. Has your word been completed yet? No. So either the Lord's truth is real and you're going to walk out that destiny or the COVID-19 virus can infect and kill you. Which truth is there? Which one is it? Amen. Either you can die from the COVID-19, in which case you better go like everybody else, and good luck with that, or you got a word of faith. Amen. Amen. And see, when you have the word of faith, there is no room for the enemy to come back into your house with seven more demons worse off than, than, than where you were before. There's no room. Because you filled your house up with word that protects you. You got the Holy Ghost ADT system. You got the Holy Ghost security system. Every door is locked. Every door has got a, it's got a security camera. You've got the motion sensors are activated. Everything. Nobody's getting in. So no lie can overcome you. But if you forget this word and you try to run out there with zeal, like, I'm a warrior for Christ. I hear these folks, men and women alike, okay? Men and women. Women are like, oh, I just, I'll hear them. M my husband's just not a godly man. He's called me to be the one in ministry. I, 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 I just, I, he doesn't understand me. I'll hear men. I'm zealous for the Lord, and I want to go out there, and I want to, you know, go out there and I'm a warrior for Christ and we all have our assignments. They'll say that as an excuse to never come under any spiritual authority. Okay. And never want to receive wisdom. They never want to receive insight because, because to them, they're a different part of the body and they're going to go do this different assignment because we're all different parts of the body. Right. Well, see, my arm doesn't disattach itself from my body and go run off down the street by itself. My arm is still attached to me, and we're all going in the same direction together, and we work together, okay? So the men who say that they're zealous and they believe in God, 
yet do not understand this fundamental basic understanding of how the human biology and spirit coincide and work together and how the enemy can use that and exploit that for a devastating purpose. The enemy just loves these gung-ho like Christian men and women that think they're going to go save the, the, the world for Jesus Christ. Oh, the enemy just loves them because they're too prideful and they're too ignorant to get this teaching, and they didn't see it for its intricacy, and the enemy exploits the word that says in Hosea, for my people perish for their lack of knowledge, and he goes to the throne day and night, and he brings that scripture, and he brings this revelation, and he says, well, if they loved you so much, well, then how come they didn't get this? Let me go test that theory about them. And when he goes to test that theory against that individual, and they don't have any, they don't have any understanding or insight or revelation of how this is taking place, because they were so prideful they couldn't come under any, any spiritual covering, because they had their own assignments in life. Well, then when they have that hidden regret, and all of a sudden they feel like they're starting to have a heart attack. Who's going to be there to help them? Then they go to a doctor. And then the doctor says, we're looking at your heart. You're having a problem. And you're going to need medication for that. And then all of a sudden, they believe the lie. And don't discount the scripture. I, I believe it says it in either Kings or Chronicles. It talks about a king. I believe his name was Asa. But it talked about how he consulted with his physicians rather than seeking the Lord, and he died. He died because he put his stock in the physicians. So you need to understand the moment that the enemy can get you hooked to where you think you need prescription medication, which good luck with your prescription medication, because guess what's happening now with the COVID-19? I'm prophesying to you. You're going to get with the program. You, there's no way around this. You see, the supply chains are now shutting down for the minerals and the supplies that are necessary to create the pharmaceutical prescriptions that you need. So you're about to have a real slowdown and shutdown with your ability to access prescription medication, which goes back to what I prophesied years and years and years and years ago to pastors. I prophesied the so to to uh, Pastor Thomas Clark and the leadership of Christianity, I said years before it ever happened, I said uh, uh, medical cannabis will end up being one of the biggest cash crops in the United States, and it will. Medical cannabis, all natural medical cannabis, medical marijuana will end up becoming one of the best pharmaceutical products because the supply chain for the regular pharmaceuticals that get you your pills, your Synthroids, your, your Toprols, your high blood pressure medications, all of, your, all of those medications, they're about to go sky high or completely unavailable altogether kaput. Like, sorry, we have no more supply of that medication, but I need this medication to survive. We're sorry, but the medicine comes from China. The medicine comes from these areas, and no shipments are coming in because viruses like the COVID are going to begin shutting down interstate commerce. Just like in China, cities get shut down. They got to get quarantined. Well, guess what's not coming in? The trucks with the supplies that you need. But they're on a boat that's quarantined out there. So you understand this. You have to have a word of faith in order to survive. So you either have to believe one or the other, and if the enemy, you come at him with a gung-ho attitude, I want to save the world for Jesus Christ, he's like, oh, man, this is too good. Come on. Can I, can I test this theory, Lord, that he's like this? Go ahead. The first thing he does, he enters into Job's body to what? Have an adverse medical reaction or in my case, attempted to try to kill me, the moment, and this is the power of Yeshua, this is just the power of Yeshua alone, the moment that the Holy Spirit used my wife, Pastor Bless, to impart 
into me and to identify what was actually going on. And the moment I gave the Lord all that regret, all that fear, all that condemnation that I've been holding on to, all that worldly sorrow that it talks about, the moment I imparted it to him, instantaneously, I can testify to you with so much assurity and confidence that it will pass a polygraph examination. If anyone had a doubt in their mind and strapped me to a machine and said, let's tell the truth, it would show the truth when I say that instantaneously every biological effect that was taking place in my body, in my anatomy, instantaneously left me. Amen. Instantaneously. I was there. Amen. Instantaneously. Amen. The feeling in my gut bacteria left. The electricity came completely under control. Instead of it looking like it looks in the spirit like electricity was firing everywhere. Like a think of those lightning storms that you see that are in time lapse versus like you know, it like instantaneously calmed down. Instantaneously the pressure that I felt on my heart instantly left instantaneously the feeling i felt in my brain the influence instantaneously it left me it is if i was literally in it's like an hour beforehand i was enduring what felt like the equivalent of a heart attack and then instantaneously it was gone and i was filled with the holy spirit Amen. i am letting you know how this works so that each one of you can have the victory. And before we get off this phone call, we're going to impart everything to the Lord. And for those of you who do not know what that feels like or you have forgotten what it feels like, well, we're going to use the glory and we're going to impart into you so that you know what it feels like to be imparted. And then you're going to impart into us so that you know what it feels like to impart. And then you're going to impart all that sorrow, worldly sorrow, to the Lord, since then you'll be reminded like a refresher of this was is what it feels like. That was that was the first thing that took place. Then there were some other things that took place. The enemy began to switch up its battle strategy against us because of how the Lord uses us with the glory. And that's from John 17, 22 and 23, Philippians 2, 2, um, Colossians 2, 5, Matthew 9, 4, uh, geez, I can, John 14, 12, where it describes in those scriptures this profound Holy Spirit gift that is telepathic in nature, where it talks about where, where Paul was saying, I'm away from you in body, but I'm with you in spirit, or we're, we're together as one, we're in one heart and in one mind. That is not a figure of speech. It's literal. It is literally for real where this takes place because of how the Lord uses us with this profound gift. It is extraordinarily sensitive inside of us. Yeshua lets us know practically the instant, if it's during any waking hours, the instant that there is any person on the planet earth whether it be there's there's two opposing sides that i've seen and they work together so satan can't cast out satan if he can't divide his own kingdom or he would fall so they work and intertwine i've seen the camp of the enemy which is literally like satan himself okay so you have satan which is a spirit who is a living consciousness who is telepathic in nature that does use this so for think of if i can relate this to how he can use this uh glory this same telepathic gift but use it in witchcraft perfect example is legion legion had thousands of different spirits all working together just like we can in the glory where we can all work together and be in one heart and one mind and in fact, we work together as a family, as a church family, as a team to overcome any obstacles for people that are dealing with anything uh, in the glory. There is the camp of the enemy itself, which are demonic spirits. These are fallen angels. Okay. And then you have their agents here on earth. So you've got 
you've got an adversary that is for all intents and purposes not human in nature okay and then you have another adversary that is human then you have individuals that are using the glory they're using it for spiritual witchcraft purposes to cast sorcery and that's what the bible refers to as witchcraft or they call it casting spells and i gave if if folks didn't hear the message on strategy of the enemy two weeks ago they need to it's on our youtube channel it literally breaks down all the scriptures related to witchcraft and sorcery and it literally says that even in in revelation it talks about those on the outside the gnashing of teeth are those who are sexually immoral or practice magic arts and did those things that those individuals so there are people that use the gift for an unintended person purpose like the woman in act 16 16 okay or these like psychic readers or these voodoo priestess and priests okay that try to use that gift in a satanic mannerism they're all a part of the same kingdom the kingdom of satan so that you understand now that being said we the the gift of discernment in us is so hypersensitive that the moment that these folks try to pull nonsense during the daytime we're on to the, the holy spirit inside of us is right on top of it okay we'll identify it. okay we see a, a abnormality of what's going on like time to cast it out okay plain and simple what we saw was this week the enemy began switching up its battle strategy and so what it was doing was it was waiting until the twilight hours it was literally at three o'clock in the morning and it and what it was doing is it takes like think of it like if you see like episodes of cops you know or, or like how law enforcement where they do a, a SWAT raid early in the morning right they'll wait until about three o'clock in the morning because they know that the person's gonna be asleep at that hour they don't come around six or seven because they might be off at work they, they they're gonna be awake they want to catch them off guard while they're still asleep in their bed and he knows that they're going to be asleep so he tries to exploit that specific time frame so the enemy and these are real agents these are jewish individuals that were coming from the nation of israel and you got to understand how this works if you haven't been listening jewish individuals from the religious orthodox community are using this in a witchcraft purpose so that you understand how this works they have been using their gift because the entire nation of israel jews are naturally born telepathic individuals what we call the glory this is what moses their teacher taught them that's why they revert to him or refer to him and revere him as their teacher because when you are in the lord's presence you have to use the glory in this way when you're having in-depth discussions with him this is what he uses he is a, he is a being that's not he's not human so you use these gifts and moses taught this to the nation of israel the prophets in the book of kings like elisha and the school of the prophets were teaching this now make no mistake the jews carried on with this knowledge they carried on with this knowledge and god was furious with them furious that even after yeshua came even after all the thousands of years that this new testament has been with us they still used it and furious that they have not shared this with mankind properly the door to salvation they kept it to themselves in order to just no joke control the world's wealth and resources because if you don't know about the glory if you don't know about it and you're ignorant and you're reading scripture and it's not explained to you in this way and you have open doors all over the place they then go in and exploit that weakness that you have and they don't want to give you the truth because they hold on to the fact that we're children of god we got this but like paul said you call yourselves children of god he literally says as an act you call yourselves children of god but you literally don't do the very thing that god has told you to do in relationship to love and so 
God literally brought them to the point in World War II to almost the brink of extinction. He was so furious with them. And then out of that, out of that, he gave them the nation of Israel. He gave them that, hoping they would turn their hearts. But after 75 plus years, they still have bitterly refused and instead went right back to do the very thing that led to World War II in the first place. They literally went right back, right back to begin controlling the world all over again, using the glory, using it, using it to control a person's motor function, all collectively using the glory together, using it to get pastors to come to Israel and give this, give them this enchanting feeling and then go back to their to their places, never giving them the full truth about the glory, but giving them this enchanting feeling, which, by the way, is an actual medical terminology. It is a real, actual medical term called Jerusalem syndrome. So when people go to the Holy Land, people will feel this deliriously happy, almost like a psychosis, psychotic feeling of delirium. And they didn't understand that were the Jews using the glory in that way. Jerusalem syndrome, that's the Jews. That's them using the glory to impart into you an enchanting feeling. And here it is. And here it is. Instead of opening the doors to truth, they decided to hold firm. They decided to hold firm. And now, to defend their position, because there's a transition taking place, whether or not they like it, whether or not they accept it, whether or not they agree with it, whether or not they say that man is sent from Yeshua or not, makes no difference. I get to prophesy to them, and their future gets to unfold, whether or not they like it. The transition is, is that Judaism as you know it is now being trumped. It is being the truth of Yeshua, Hamashiach, and Christianity is now the power of the day. Ultra-Orthodox, the I'm holding on to the past and just the teachings of Moses, and you, you saints, and, and they want to dog you because you don't even say – like Yeshua the right way. You, they don't even say Yeshua. They say Jesus. Why are they? Why are they speaking? I heard Mike Bloomberg. He literally said, "Why do they call Jesus by a Mexican name?" They literally make fun of us, and yet never shared with us the key to how actually Mike Bloomberg got his money. Well, Mike Bloomberg, if you would have shared with us that all of you in, in the Jewish community shared the glory with one another, and you used that to exploit people by accessing their cerebral cortex, and you were gaining secrets, trade secrets, and actually going through all of their professionals there on Wall Street to gain entry into their mind and then stealing that and then using it for your financial gain, well, then we wouldn't have been so ignorant. And we would have been able to share in all that wealth, but you didn't want to share the, 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 the power of the glory. They didn't want to do that. They wanted to hoard it for themselves because one life to live, right? Might as well get as much money as we want. So what I've noticed, oh, I'm telling you, I am sharing with you the deadliest truth of the kingdom of how this works. Pay very close attention because they are the ones who put nerve agent in my vehicle that wanted to kill me because of what I know and what took place down in Los Angeles. Take heed of these words. Take heed of the word of a man who's saying it. So here's what the camp of the enemy has done. Jewish individuals, mainly women, which is disgusting, these men sit there and train these wonderful, wonderful people that could use this gift to bring life, but instead trying to destroy people, are predominantly using women, and they switched up their battle strategy 
to 3 a.m. in the morning. So at 3 a.m., they start using their gift. But here's the worst part about it. One of them, and this is why the Lord says, do not manipulate others. This is why I, I when I heard Pastor Teddy say this, I was like, this is, this is, you are spot on, brother, when you said, well, that was from the, from the, from the Holy Ghost when you said that. Because through the glory, there is the ability to mimic others. The glory signature of another human being. So, for instance, Pastor Bless, there's a very specific feeling that she has to the glory. And when I concentrate, I can mimic that feeling. And we learned this from a Jewish occult psychic that was in Canada because there's a lot of agents in Canada that are Jewish individuals that are using their gifts for the most unholy of purposes that I won't get into in detail here on the phone. I'll only speak about it in person when there's no telephones present, because if I did speak about it, it would do nothing more than less than go to World War III. Well, this individual who was attacking me once, um, when we, the moment I felt the attack, I contacted my wife, Bless, and we immediately access this woman's cerebral cortex and what's going on in her brain. What is she thinking and what is in her heart? We find out this is a woman, and her intentions are purely evil, and she, she has a vile spirit, but she wants to give off the impression that she's a friend. And so the literal feeling of friend, there's a physical feeling to it that you can give an impart to someone in the glory to make them feel the impression that you're a friend. And we began to get come together as a church group, and we came against this particular woman and the spirit that was inside of her, and then all of a sudden we felt her squirming. She put on this shield that almost made it feel like it was like a plaster, like a glue that you had to get through to get to her, and the closer and closer we got she would mimic in the glory. First, it was friends. She's like, I'm a friend. I'm a friend. And then all of a sudden, we had the sensation through the glory that it was a baby, like an infant. She literally mimicked an infant because who on the planet Earth would come against an infant? And the, the very feeling, yes, Brother Timothy, good. You're receiving it. This is good. I feel you in the glory received. Good. You need to get this because this is how it works. This thing is wholly evil. Remember, the devil is a liar. So what's another lie to him? Oh, what, are you going to act like an infant or I'm going to act like a friend? It's just another lie, right? So for him, as we began, as the victory began to unfold, that spirit inside of her starts squirming. All of a sudden, we get this feeling in the glory like we're literally attacking an infant. So she gave off the impression that she was a baby, but I didn't listen to that in any way, shape, or form. I'm like, oh, no, <laughs> you won't play that game, and went straight to it, and the Lord had me through the power of Yeshua alone, and this is backed up by Scripture, even in Acts 16 when, when Paul uh, cast out the spirit from the woman who was able to foretell the future in the same way, the Lord has placed a gift inside me to the only way to describe it, it is to, and I say this in reverence to the Lord, it is to turn off the gift of the glory in a person's brain. And there is a way to do it. And there is a way that the Lord uses me to do it against these individuals where it, it is a permanent job. It like literally goes in and it changes the DNA inside of the person's brain. It literally does something to the circuitry that I do not fully understand, but it takes away their ability to access that part of their brain to even emit that signal anymore, and it shuts them down, okay, and it shuts this person down. Well, what the enemy did is they started switching up this week their battle strategy, so instead of attacking during the daylight, they waited till 3 o'clock in the morning. And then had the audacity to mimic, so they used a team. They had one person that was good at mimicking the glory signature of individuals that are close allies to ours. 
And what they did was they used the gift to mimic that individual while the other person was attempting to inject the witchcraft and inject the spiritual attack to try to affect the, the, the system. Mm -hmm. Now, immediately when I pick this up, I go, okay, well, hold on a second. The enemy wants to try to sow seeds of discord mm -hmm. among brothers yes. to get me to think, wait a minute, this person who's an ally really isn't an ally to try to use my gift against them. But that's a lie from the enemy. Amen. So how do you know the difference? The Lord told you, you will know them by the fruit that they bear. You will know them by the fruit that they bear. You will know them when, for instance, when I open up my heart right now, use the glory with me. Even the men on the phone call, use the glory with me. And feel my heart. Feel my true heart. Yeah. Amen. Feel it. Amen. Feel it. And when you feel it, say amen. It's good. Feel my heart. Amen. And that feeling that you feel, keep focusing. Because I'm going to share with you my heart through eternity. And the only way I can share this with you from heaven is because I have been there in heaven. Feel the feeling of heaven and say amen when you begin to feel it. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. yes. Amen. That is the truth. If you ever feel anything that's contrary to that, and you have an enemy that attempts to mimic any one of your allies, that's a lie from Satan. Do not believe it. Amen. Remember the truth. Remember you have an enemy that can mimic. Now, to show you how this works, um, Sam, can you hear me? I'm going to give everybody. I'm going to give everybody an example how this works. I'm going to use this so that you understand. I'm going to mimic Pastor Bless for a brief moment, and when you feel the difference in my spirit, say amen. Amen. That's not Pastor Blessed. That's me mimicking her glory signature. Now we go back to normal. Yeah. There's a difference. I am teaching this to you so that you understand the weapons of warfare your enemy is using against us. So you are not ignorant of the enemy's devices. But you know every plan, every attack vector of the enemy. Now, for that door, that, 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 that 3 a.m. foolish nonsense that was taking place from these just witches, demonically led individuals, Jewish individuals in Israel using this gift against us. My wife has been granted certain spiritual authorities that I do not have. I'm humble enough to tell you. This woman, God loves her so much that he has given her certain significant abilities to open and close doors that override even my spiritual authority. I cannot open a door if she has closed it. She has spiritual authority that outweighs mine in that regard. And it was strategic that way because the Lord knew that during this season that the enemy was going to be pulling all sorts of strings with me in the glory to try to fight me and try to take me down. And I had to go through a whole lot of nonsense to get to the point where the truth was revealed in, its, in the way that I'm describing to you now that grants victory. So strategically, he placed that inside of her, and this was something that she did not like, and she closed the door to that. 
And because she's closed the door to that, that attack will no longer occur. So don't don't fret you as believers thinking that you're going to come under some sort of attack because the source of that attack that was coming against us at that hour in trying to use that manipulation and use that use that uh, uh, multi you know trying to the enemy using teamwork to try to come against us one mimic while the other one tries to attack okay it's been taken away but uh, nevertheless i'm letting you know how it works so that you can defend yourself while at the same time giving you the strict command from yeshua you are not you are forbidden from using this gift to manipulate others amen Amen. If you use it to manipulate others, then let the Lord take away your gift. If you use it to manipulate others, then let the Lord himself take away your ability to even cast that gift away. I say that in reverence to the Lord and in the fear of the Lord. Don't play any game. Be righteous and holy with the information that you're being given because this is sacred information from the camp of the enemy that's been used against us. And see, we've been sitting here the whole time not understanding how this worked. We've been sitting here living in civilization, but this is the freedom the Lord wanted us to understand. Do you see now how the enemy has been exploiting mankind? Yes. How easily that when a group of individuals, a group of Jews, use this, how affects mankind? They have been literally controlling the top tier of Christianity without them even fully understanding what's been going on. They go to Israel and get an enchanting, the Jerusalem syndrome. They get this enchanting feeling. They literally get used from the spirit of divination in witchcraft. They go right on back, and then they start supporting Israel. And the Christians here are just eating it up, thinking that they're walking in power. And the whole time, they're walking in no power at all. They have no knowledge of the glory. They have no intricate details of how this is actually operating. They're not – have you heard Joel Olstein give any power – has he given any teachings about the glory? Have you, have you heard him prophesy in power of anything that has any sense or any meaning? No. Has he taught you how to use this telepathic gift? Has he shared with the congregation how to use it in unison with one another? Has he taught you how to go into the body cellular system and what to do to literally get rid of any type of demonic spirit? Has he shown you how to go through the cerebral cortex and put a shield around every synapse? Yet, these pastors, has John Hagee, did he, did he say that? No. But what they will talk about is they'll talk about support for Israel, but they'll leave this out. And the guilty party is the Jews who knew about this gift but never bothered to tell John Hagee about it. Instead, they were using their gift to give a literal enchanting feeling, that Jerusalem syndrome feeling, that almost that feeling of like, oh my gosh, this is like the feeling of the Holy Land. It's a physical feeling through the glory. They impart it to you so you feel that joy and excitement and go, I have got to give to the Holy Land because, man, Israel is like I can feel that power, but it was used as a tool of manipulation. And the religious Orthodox Jews that are pulling the strings, that are all working together like a team in, in the background using the glory on these pastors, they're sitting here just literally laughing their socks off because not only is nothing being done at the churches, but they're literally reaping the financial benefits. They don't care at all whether or not John Hagee supports whatever. They don't care what kind of books he writes about blood moons and Shemitahs. They don't care. They're getting paid. It goes right back to the religious Orthodox communities where then they mistreat Christians that walk into their villages 
And if you try to speak to a single Jew in a religious Orthodox community, they literally have vehicles ready to put you in a caged vehicle where you just all up disappear. But the money you're giving is going to the community that they're promptly shaking your hand and telling you all about the Holy Land and this is Jerusalem and this is the land that God made for us and we're partners with Christians. But you drive in their community, you talk to one Jew about Christ, they will put you in a vehicle, literally put you in handcuffs, put you in the back of the vehicle. No one will ever see or hear from you ever again in your life. They will murder you. But they'll take your money. They'll shake your hand. Oh, they'll love it when you write the books about the blood moons and the Shemitahs. They'll love that because that puts money in their communities because you're too stupid, in their opinion. You're too stupid. Understand this. This is how the Jewish community has been using their gift in a satanic purpose. Now, not everyone are like them. And I had a a sermon about this recently where the Jews they are followers of Yeshua secretly support us here and I had a sermon about this and that they need to keep wearing their garments until Yeshua gives them their white garments it's okay keep wearing your garment in secret it's okay you need to be incognito because there are Jews that are ruthless in that community that are utterly ruthless, that work with the Jewish mafia and the Mossad, and they use their gift for power and profit, exploitation, the Jeffrey Epsteins, okay, trafficking women, bribery, everything that's evil, and they sit there and they make excuses and act like it's holy, put on the religious garments, pretend that it's holy. But it's not. They will kill. They're the kind that that Paul describes in the book of, or Luke describes in the book of Acts that they literally take vows that they won't even eat or drink until they've shed blood, even though the word literally says that's one of the things that God finds detestable is men who are quick or or feet are quick to shed blood. They have no patience. So these men and women in the religious Orthodox community need to be incognito. If they came out all of a sudden, it may do undue pressure that may literally put their lives on the line. And we need you as an ally in that community. We need you to continue to be incognito. We need you to continue. And you know what? You got scripture to back this up. Paul says, he says, I become all things to all people. To the rich, I become the rich. To the poor, I become the poor. For this fight, in order to be successful and have the most numbers that we need and the support we need, we need you followers of Yeshua in the religious Orthodox community to continue to dress the part. We need you to do that, and you've got scripture to back you up. Be all things to all people, so be that thing. Infiltrate. Go into the synagogues. Begin to use the glory, and very, very, very mildly begin to share with them Yeshua in the power. Be very, very careful. Be very wise in what you say. Don't just change your outfit outfit out of the gate because you're going to have members of your same community that are ruthless and will want to kill you even though you're a Jew with them and they're not supposed to hurt or harm a member of the tribe. They will. They have no conscience. They are sons and daughters of Satan. Even if they're Jews, they're sons and daughters of Satan. They have made their choice so that you can continue to remain in the fight. And instead of using your gifts for a devastating purpose, instead you use your gifts to help aid the kingdom, to bless us with encouragement, bless us with peace impart continued knowledge on how we can use this to defeat Satan, because each one of us are in a common goal for the return of Yeshua the Messiah, so that the true boundaries of Israel can be established, but not through the Mossad, not through the Israeli Defense Forces, through Yeshua.
It will not be the Iron Dome. It will not be the Sling of David. It won't be the Laser Sword. I don't care what kind of biblical acronyms they put on it. It will be Yeshua himself who will defend and establish the borders of Israel. And each one of us, each one of us as children, the Gentiles, who make the Israels, to make the Jews envious, it literally says that in the book of Romans, that he gave us this salvation, and he's blessed us with this glory to make them envious. You don't have to be envious. We're your brother and your sister. We want the same exact thing that you want. We want the same thing. We want the same paradise, the same utopia. We want to serve the same way. We want to use our gifts in the same way. We have hearts of love, even if we don't look Jewish or not uh, like genetically a son or daughter of Abraham. And again, neither was Melchizedek. Melchizedek was not a son of Abraham. Yet he was no less like the great king himself. In the same way, we're your brothers and sisters. Continue to support us. Continue to be incognito. Continue to be that way. We need you there. The, the enemy is too ruthless there in the city. If you exposed yourself too early, it would do undue harm and trouble to you. So continue to support us and continue to show the love of Yeshua to others. Praise and worship. Listen, listen, every Jew in Israel, listen to Pastor Teddy Chadwick, uh, Pastor Teddy Chadwick there in Israel. Listen, listen to that man. That is a kind and gentle and humble soul. Listen to the words of wisdom that he pours out, that the Lord Yeshua uses him. Listen to him. When praise and worship starts, support him with praise and worship so that when that darkness that's coming against Israel, and it is, that it will pass over you through the true praise and worship. But use Pastor Teddy as a worship leader of sorts. And then take that into your synagogues, that praise and worship, because that opens the door to love. And you'll open that door to love, and you're going to find a community of Christian believers on the other side of your villages and on the other side of your fence that are just wanting to love you equally the exact same way. Amen. And share with them that glory. Share with them that love and the glory. Share with them the revelation and knowledge that you've been given from your teacher Moses. I say this to the glory of the Lord alone. This is a powerful, powerful service. Yeah. And I know principalities and powers are listening because I feel the glory. I feel I feel the principalities and powers in Israel listening. And it's good. Stop resisting love. Stop resisting love. We're not your enemies. But God, your house needs to be cleaned. Your house needs to be cleaned out. That's an internal thing. You guys got a clean house. You've got men and women that are not operating in love. They are not. They are operating in witchcraft, the very thing that Moses forbade you from doing. They are doing it. They don't need to be in those positions of power. They need to get out of the Mossad. The, one, the religious orthodox that, are, that have love in their hearts, okay, they need to make the decisions and start getting these people out of the Mossad. They need to get them out of the security services. They need to get them out of these decision-making roles. They are bringing destruction to Israel. They are opening the door to the same evil that God hated prior to World War II. They are literally opening the door right open again. And you got to understand whether or not the, the Jews believe me or not. I'm here to prophesy to them from Yeshua, Hamashiach. I don't lie. Word in time tells the story here, and it comes to pass. 
So don't neglect this. Get rid of those individuals. Just like the Benjamite, the evil had to get out of the out of the tribe. Evil's got to get out of the camp. Now, now we're going to go back to imparting to Yeshua. We're going to go back to imparting to Yeshua. So what we're going to do, Sister Angie, get ready. You're going to be our Holy Ghost gateway here. <laughs> we've got we've got uh, three brothers on this phone call. I'm going to unmute all the phones now. Now, you men on the phone call, what I want you to do is I want you to acknowledge God when you begin feeling the glory so the people here understand that it's a physical feeling. You're acknowledging that it's a physical feeling, that it's, we're not just talking out of our brain. We're not just all a bunch of group psychosis here. Like we actually know what we're talking about. We're not going to give any room to the enemy. We're going to acknowledge the Lord. What we're going to do here is I'm going to have Sister Angie, and she's going to use the glory with you so that you can feel it first. And she's going to impart to you that compassion and love that you feel, okay? And then when you begin receiving that, I want you to say amen. So what we're going to do is first things first, I'm start with you, uh, Brother uh, brother Sam Aston, can you hear me? Yes. All right. Right now, I want you to open your heart and mind so that Sister Angie can begin using the glory. Front door. When you feel it, say amen, Sam. If you feel anything in the spirit, help me. You can speak. Amen. Now, go through his mind and impart to him that love and compassion. Impart that from Yeshua, from the love of Yeshua. Amen. Do you receive that, Brother At Sam? Oh, yes. Okay. Now, Brother Sam, you've got your sister here who needs to receive an impartation from you. But in order for you to do this, you're going to have to use the glory and access her cerebral cortex and begin imparting to, into her, amen, love and compassion. When you feel it, you need to say amen. So use your gift and impart to her. What does love or peace physically feel like? And impart amen. that into her cerebral cortex. Amen. They're going to enjoy. You feel it? I'm feeling love. You feel love? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, Sam, just how you've imparted to her, you need to impart everything that is connected to worldly sorrow to Yeshua. In the same way you imparted to her, but you're not going to impart that worldly sorrow to her. You're going to impart it to Yeshua himself. Anything you can think of, this is what you're going to do. It will release it to the Lord. Brother Timothy Perkins, can you hear me? Oh, let me unmute you. It'll help if you're unmuted. Can you hear me, Brother Timothy? Yes. All right. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. All right, Brother okay. Timothy, we're going to do the exact same thing, okay? Mr. Angie is going to connect with you in the glory. She's going to share the glory with you. Amen. Now impart to him that love of Yeshua. Yes, Lord. Amen. Yeah. Amen. All right. Yeah. 
Amen. Keep blessing that brother. He has not been on this phone call. He needs to receive it. In fact, yeah. I dare say, let's use the gift. Use it in that white light blessed with this brother. Use that. So you're going to begin feeling something, Brother Timothy. We're going to be using the glory with you because you haven't been on the phone with us every day this week. That's me, Brother Timothy, if you're wondering. Amen. All right. Amen. That feeling, that's holiness. That's good. Amen. Wow. That is someone, that feeling of holiness, that's someone assisting us that's not on this phone call. That is our friends helping us. That feeling that you felt, that is them helping us the way I've asked for it. That did not come from any of us. Now, yeah. Brother Timothy, I'd, uh -huh. like you to use your, I'd like you to use your gift now with Sister Angie and impart to her. Impart. In her brain, impart the love of Yeshua. Yes. Amen. I when felt it. Yes, Lord. yes, amen. Right there. Now, in the same way you just imparted yes. to Sister Angie, impart all of your worldly sorrow, every regret you've ever had, every regret you've ever had, Brother Timothy. Share that with the Lord. Impart it to him. Begin using it to impart to him. Every terrible decision you've made, everything, every fear, everything that is contrary to your word that you would lead your people, everything that's a contrary to a lie about your future is a lie from the enemy. Impart it to him. You're going to find this. Amen. I just felt that. I felt a release. Amen. Now you're imparting in a way where it takes away from the enemy being able to try to destroy you. Amen. Brother amen. Michael Ladd, amen. amen. And you should begin to feel better <laughs> in your body, it's like literally, because I can feel your body it physically feels better. Now, Brother Michael Adcock, are you there? I am. Amen. In the same exact way, we're going to keep using Sister Angie here. She's going to impart to you. That's it. Mm -hmm. Just receive. Yes. Receive in the holiness of Yeshua. Amen. 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 Now, you receive that. Now, I want you to impart into her as well. Amen. Now, Brother Amen. Michael, in the same exact way, all of your regret, all of your, your worldly sorrow, Fear, condemnation, the mistakes that you've made that would otherwise bring condemnation to you, use the glory and now impart it the same way you just imparted to, to Angie, but impart it to Yeshua himself. That's it. That's it. Physically see it. Yes, physically see it and then let it just go right on out of you. Yes. Amen. Yes, oh, wow. You are doing it. Yes. Yes, Lord. This is what it means. This is what it means when we talk about giving it to the cross. You're actually giving it through the glory. Now, each one of you men have been given a precious treasure, precious knowledge. 
this is how. This is what you're going to give your son, Michael Stanley. This is what you're going to give your children and those who will listen to you, those who are zealous for the Lord. You give that. I don't know what you're doing. Yes. Pay attention. This is what you're going to be teaching them, those who are zealous for the kingdom. And listen, we are family with Israel. I feel that very strong. We're one in the same family, and we need to support Israel. We need to. We're never going to take that away. It says the Abrahamic covenant said, whoever blesses you will be blessed, and whoever curses you will be cursed. So there is still a blessing as we work together with Israel. So we're going to work together with them while God uses me to identify the dirty laundry that's taking place there that nobody wants to talk about. Okay, But they still need our support, and we need theirs. We're one family in Yeshua. Okay? Amen. You're going to take this knowledge and help the youth, help other men. And when you help them, help them in secret. Help them in secret. Do not announce it. Uh, on like electronic email don't don't write i helped you know bob smith get free and he's been set free and he's received everything and he's imparted and i've taught him the glory the moment you write about bob smith the enemy goes who is bob smith how is he connected with you he goes through your social media profile identifies who this bob smith is where their address is and immediately the enemy goes to work gets a team the team goes to work and now bob smith is under attack and he doesn't even understand what is going on we saw this with brother sam aston sam received not only breakthrough healing he received healing from his fungus he technically doesn't even need to take he doesn't even need to take his fungal medication he's been utterly and totally set free completely set free and well, what did the enemy do what did the enemy do this brother put a video on YouTube of his testimony, and all of a sudden, this brother like, Josh, I'm under attack. Hey, he Josh. Been... Yes. Can I give you a testimony on that? Yeah. I gave you, remember, I sent you a personal message about proof of the glory. I sent it to yes. you personally. I didn't send it to the chat, and that's when I got attacked after that. Because you sent me the thing about that, and then I got attacked. I just thought of what you said, and that's exactly what happened. Yes. As soon as you're as soon as you're announcing electronically, okay, that you're helping aid in supporting me or you're using the glory, immediately the enemy is coming after me like it has a billion dollar bounty on my head. Okay. But the Lord told me last Monday that he can't that no harm will come to me. Ooh, Nevertheless, this is how it's working. So what you do, let your work be discreet and in secret. Amen. Don't announce it on the phone. Don't put it on a text. Don't put it in an email. Consider that the Lord, consider that the camp of the enemy is looking at each one of you as a military adversary at this point because he has done everything starting from your childhood up to this point to convince you you don't walk in this power because he is terrified of you realizing that Yeshua has truly given you power to bind and loose here on earth as it is in heaven. Okay, He wow. has deliberately done this in fear because he knows that once you understand how to bind and loose, his, 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 his world gets a whole lot smaller. So use this in discretion for the time being. Use this in discretion. Timothy, you as well. Don't announce it. Don't email. Don't text. Consider that every one of your texts, your emails, your internet viewing history, everything is 100% being monitored by the enemy. Okay, It is being monitored, and the moment you put someone's name up that you're helping, they're going to launch an attack against that person. And if that person has not gone through the same training that you men have gone through, then they're open to attack where the enemy will exploit that back door because they lack that knowledge. So consider that. Amen. 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 This is it. Amen. Amen. This is the key. This is the key to victory. This is the key to victory. And thank you, 
to whomever it was that did help us in that moment that is listening to what's taking place, that's with us in the spirit, that is helping to aid us, thank you. Continue to aid us. We need it. Satan, as you can see, is trying to turn this thing into just nothing but a circus, and he is just out for blood. We're all here for the same common goal. Let's work together. Amen. That Amen. is the word today. Amen. Amen. That's the word. These are the tactics of the enemy, saying, use this information and let us covertly begin to expand the kingdom in Amen. mighty ways. Lord, I speak Amen. protection over this phone call. I speak protection over the men on this phone call, over their families, over their loved ones, that no retaliating spirits would be able to come against them. We pray that in the name of Yeshua, Lord, bind every assignment that would try to come against them. Lord, let them carry out their assignments and produce great fruit. I pray this in Yeshua's name. Amen. 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 That's it. God bless you. God bless you, saints. God bless you, men of God. God bless you. You are lights in the darkness right now. God bless each one of you. Amen. We'll talk again soon. God bless you, God too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.